is arguably the most popular character in DC Comics. As such, he has a catalog of alternate versions of himself, some good, and some who are truly monstrous. I'm Adam Andrews. I'm Amanda McKnight. This is Top 10 Nerd. And this is the Top 10 Monstrous Alternate Versions of Batman. Number 10, Anti-Living Batman. I am so torn when it comes to this zombie-like infected version of Bats. He hails from the deceased universe where he ends up tragically being infected by the anti-life equation and turned into a member of the anti-living, a mindless, violent zombie. However, before this happens, Batman is one of the first to figure out just what is really going on and to try to find a cure or a way to stop it. In the end, however, he gets infected and despite trying to slow down the infection with one of Mr. Freeze's cryo suits, succumbs to the virus. He doesn't stay a zombie like anti-living being for long though as Alfred Pennyworth, his butler, puts him out of his misery. Really his whole transformation is just like making preparations, passing on vital information to those not yet infected, and saying goodbye to his son Damian Wayne. So like he's a monster but like it's a really sad journey getting there. Number 9 Owl Man Owl Man or Thomas Wayne Jr of Earth 3 isn't a monster in the physical sense, but certainly in the personality department. If you haven't heard of Earth 3, it's basically a place where strength is pretty above all else, and it's home to the crime syndicate of America, which is the evil Justice League, basically. Thomas is about as bad as you can get. For example, as a kid, he believed his parents were mismanaging their money, so he decided to kill them in cold blood. His younger brother Bruce protested to this, and he too was killed. He took the city of Gotham for his own through fear, bribery, and blackmail. He killed the family of Richard Grayson to make the boys susceptible to his influence. He even had a strange affair with Ultraman's partner, Superwoman. Owlman is a bad dude. Number 8 Batman the Silenced One of my favorite things about the DC multiverse is that we don't just have the multiverse. We also have the dark multiverse. Or we had the dark multiverse. Anyways, still, I'm confident it'll return given time. Just give it enough time and everything comes back around, baby. Thank you, comics. The Dark Multiverse is like the Elseworlds Dark Reflection, and when it comes to the anthology series Tales of the Dark Multiverse, or Tales from the Dark Multiverse, one or the other, often offered to readers in small batches with creative teams presenting their own dark realities and twists on classic DC tales. One such character and tale that gets twisted in the Dark Multiverse is Batman's Hush. In this world, the roles become reversed, with Thomas Elliot taking over Wayne and Enterprises and locking Bruce away in Arkham Asylum after Bruce moved in with the Elliot family following the death of Martha and Thomas Wayne. However, Elliot isn't Batman in this reality, but a corrupt senator and business owner. It's not a straight role reversal. Working with the League of Assassins. Bruce, however, is not as crazy as he seems, and he ends up escaping Arkham and becoming the silenced, in essence, an anti hero out for revenge on Tommy, whose character design resembles Hush. Did I mention how creepy he is? by the way. He's super creepy. Number 7. Leatherwing According to Earth 10's history, the Axis powers managed to achieve history in World War II. With the National Socialist Party victorious, Bruce became a willing agent of their perverse plans, taking on the identity of Leatherwing. As you can imagine, this guy wasn't too great. Holding the beliefs set out by the powers that ruled, he was against interracial relationships, he believed in a master race, and he held up the many fascist ideals of his team, the New Reichmen. Thankfully, the New Reichmen were betrayed by their leader Overman, who still knew that this way was the wrong way. Still a crazy racist Batman, gives me chills. <sighs> Number 6. Red Death Another villainous version of Bruce Wayne, Red Death also hails from the Dark Multiverse. If you can't tell, I really like the Dark Multiverse. However, he doesn't come from the Tales of the Dark Multiverse series, but is rather one of the Batman who laughs Dark Knights. The Dark Knights are basically like an evil collection of Batman from across the Dark Multiverse, each one standing in or representing a member of the Justice League. Red Death represents the Flash. In his reality, Bruce Wayne was pushed to the limit after losing so many of his sidekicks, believing that he would be better at using the Speed Force than Barry Allen. He stole the Speed Force from him and then proceeded to use it to kill all of his enemies, becoming known by the speedster and villainous mantle of Red Death. Number 5 Frankenbat Castle of the Bat is an Elseworld story from 1994 that basically takes the story of Frankenstein and plops in Batman characters. So, Bruce Wayne, after suffering the death of his father Thomas Wayne, goes almost mad trying to find a way to bring his father back. He succeeds, but not in the way he or 
anyone else wants. Thomas Wayne is brought back to life and dresses just like Batman normally would, but with more of a gothic Victorian style. Oh, um, and he's a mindless, massive, undead monstrosity. He busts out of where he's being held, and it leads to Bruce having to apprehend his undead dad. The story is actually quite emotional. Check it out. Number four, gods and monsters. That's right, in the alternate reality of gods and monsters, there isn't really a prominent Bruce Wayne. Instead, here, Kirk Langstrom, known as Man Bat in the Prime Earth and New Earth continuities, takes up the mantle of Batman, becoming part vampire bat, part man, also pseudoscience vampire. He was attempting to create a cure for lymphoma, which did work, but ended up splicing his genes and turning him into a science-made vampire. Kirk, as Batman from Gods and Monsters, does need to consume blood to survive and typically feeds on either animals or criminals to get it. Number three, the Devastator. On alternate Earth negative one, Batman and Superman were pals and everything was dandy. Until one day, Superman changed and rampaged, turning on humanity. Superman killed almost everyone, and Batman tried his best to help bring his friend back. But once Superman killed Lois Lane and cut off Batman's arm, there was no going back. Batman injected himself with the Doomsday Virus, turning him into the Devastator, powering him to take out Superman, but also making him lose all his sympathy. He still retains all the knowledge of Bruce Wayne, plus the fighting skill, and he acts as the muscle for the Dark Knights. Truly a monstrous Batman. Number two, Vampire Batman. Gods and Monsters isn't the only reality where Batman becomes a vampire. Oh no, no, no. I mean, he is Batman after all, he's Batman. Obviously, he's gonna be vampires a lot. He also ends up as one in his fight against Dracula in Red Rain. However, Bruce attempts to resist fully turning and giving in to his monstrous side here. Instead, he attempts to hold off on completing his transformation fully, becoming a sort of dampier, if you will. That is until Joker kills Catwoman, who in this series is also a werewolf. Spooky stuff. Joker taking Selina's life makes Bruce snap, and he ends up feeding on him, seemingly killing him. Although it would later be revealed that Joker survived this whole ordeal. Afterwards, Batman has Alfred lock him away, worried about the monster he'll become because he has now tasted human blood. Number one, the Batman who laughs. I know, I know, I've talked about him like, like a lot, but it is for a good reason. The Batman who laughs is arguably one of the most dangerous versions of Batman who's ever lived or been written. If you don't know yet, he is a dark multiverse version of Batman who has killed the Joker, but inadvertently infected himself with a strain of Joker toxin. The resulting transformation turns this version of Bruce Wayne into an amalgamation of Joker and Batman. All the intelligence and resourcefulness and martial skill of Batman mixed with the buckwild, psychotic, murderous mind of the Joker. He is pure chaos and destruction, and he lays waste to his own Bat family and the Justice League. He is a pack of Jokerized Robins, and he is the leader of the Dark Knights, a few of which were featured on this list. On top of that, he is just truly terrifying to see. Who are some of your favorite most monstrous Batman alternates? Which do you think is the most monstrous and why? Are there more monster types that you'd like to see Batman come across the multiverse? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host, Adam Andrews. And I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube. Bye.